Good morning. My name is Daryl Bennett. Uh, can I just say something to you today? Stop trying to figure it out. <laughs> you know, it's an old saying that the devil's in the details. And I really believe that. The devil is in the details. It's kind of like a play on words, but it's true. That's, that's where the devil lives in the details. Details will keep you stuck right where you are. Details will have you vision boarding for the rest of your life and never moving toward anything. Now, I'm not against the vision board. I'm not against, you know, putting things and looking at them and confessing them. But at what point do we take a step? I, I, re, I remember I met somebody. She said, God has called me to be a prayer warrior. I said, and what else? Because <laughs> because the scripture says you got to watch and pray, which means you it's not going to be enough for you just to be on your knees. You gotta you gotta know how to move towards some things. And I wanna I wanna release over your life for the rest of this this year to finish off strong. Stop trying to figure out how it's going to all come into place. I, I don't I don't know how it's going to come into place. I have found I don't even have to pull out the Bible right now. I have found when you look over the trajectory of remarkable, high performing, great achieving men and women throughout history, these are people who took steps and didn't know exactly what would be next. Dr. King said, you don't have to see the whole staircase. Take the first step in faith. You have to imagine that when they sat down to strategize how they would come up against the forces of segregation, they didn't know how all the details would, 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 would go down. In fact, we're told that when they were planning to walk, march on Washington, they were nixing speakers and cutting people out and changing the program all the way up to the, to the moment that Dr. King stood up to speak. They didn't know all of the details. And I feel like sometimes in life we have what's called analysis paralysis, where we are so focused on trying to strategize and calculate and plan every minute detail that we don't move. Now, I think planning is important, but when planning takes the place of action, that's when it's a problem. You, you're, you're, you're sitting here trying to figure out how everything's going to happen from the couch. And, and let me tell you something that I learned. I remember when uh, when I went to Atlanta, when I went to college in Atlanta, we had these real bad rainstorms. I think it was some of the worst rainstorms in any city that I've been in. But what was amazing to me was I had an old Ford pickup truck, you know, Ford fix or repair daily. But I could get from one end of the city to the next by only seeing 20 feet in front of me in the high beams. I didn't, I didn't need to see the whole road. I didn't have to see from uh, uh, Morehouse College to Buckhead. All I needed to see was 20 feet. And when I got 20 feet, guess what? The next 20 were revealed. And the next 20 were revealed. And that's how life is. You gotta move now. You're, you're waiting in your moment of, of opportunity is closing because you're, you're, you're trying to figure it out. And I want to release you right now of, of the, the burden of being God over your life. I want to release you over the burden of being the master of your destiny and the captain of your ship and all this other stuff that we say and the pilot of your plane. And I want you to relinquish control to say that, yes, I'm going to make decisions, but there's a, there's a stronger hand guiding me and I got the move. I got, I got the move. Let me tell you something that I have learned. I have learned about myself. <laughs> you know, um, I need help with knowing the direction because I'm going to run. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run. See, I'm not, see, some people, they're sitting waiting on a word of God. <laughs> that amazes me. You've been waiting for three years on a word of God, but you're sitting. You're doing absolutely nothing waiting on this word. Meanwhile, somebody else may be waiting on a word from God, but they're moving. And I've had a lot of doors slammed in my face, but I'm going to tell you something. A door can only be slammed in my face if I'm running towards it. See, you can't even, some of you can't even claim that door's been slammed in your face because you haven't gone nowhere. You're, you're still trying to figure all this out. And I want you to know that, that you don't have to know all the details. In fact, you may not know all the details until you make the first step. I would submit to you that you might finish the whole task and still not know all the details. Have you ever, have you ever done something and you look back and say, now how the heck did I do that? <laughs> you finished it and you don't even know how you did it. So how in the world from the, from the beginning are you going to know it all? This is your moment and this is your opportunity. Some of you have an idea to start a business. I'm not saying don't create a business plan. I'm not saying don't write out a vision. I'm not saying don't strategize. But what I am saying is make a step. Vision boarding is not a step. You, you know, go into some banks and knock on some doors and figure out what the application is for some loans. I mean, I tell people, some people say, well, you know, I want to go to college, but I don't know what I'm going to study. Well, at least enroll, because I, I, this I can tell you. 99% of colleges are not going to make you pick a major before you take one class. So let's, let's apply. 
Let's enroll. And then let's start figuring out what that next step is. But don't spend all of your time from the to from the starting line trying to figure out how everything is going to happen. Now, let me share this quick story and then and then I'm going to uh, jump off. Um, I, I think about the story of uh, Sarah Breedlove. And Sarah Breedlove, you may not know who she is, but just bear with me. I promise I'll be only about three minutes, but bear with me because I, I think you need to hear this this morning. It's going to help you. Sarah Breedlove was born into a family that was... Uh, abject poverty, let's just call it what it is. And her life was not no crystal staircase, okay? She lost her parents by the time she was 14. She was married and in an abusive relationship, then the husband ended up dying, then she was in another abusive relationship. She had, by the age of 21, she had no parents, her husband was dead, and she's caring for children. And she's making, you know, less than five cents a day working as a laundry woman because she lived in the early 1900s. And then as to add insult to industry, in, not industry, insult to injury, this woman begins to lose her hair. And she is now uh, trying to figure out a way to recapture her dignity. And so she begins to mix chemicals in the same sink that she washed her clothes in. See, that's a whole nother lesson that you got to use what you have right where you are, right where you can. Um, and so she begins to mix these chemicals and she begins to put them in her hair. And miraculously, through trial and error, she creates a formula that allows her to grow her hair back. Then she comes up with this idea and says, if I lost my hair because of this, how many other people could benefit from what I've created? Now, you may not know her as Sarah Breedlove. The world knows her by her given name that she was that she gave herself after she became wealthy, and that's Madam C.J. Walker, the first self-made woman millionaire in American history. She went on to create a multi-million-dollar uh, beauty care product line, the likes of which had never been seen before. She founded schools. She even at one point invested in and created a bank. She was that wealthy, and this was in the early 1900s, and she was a black woman. And I, I want you to understand something. If you would have, you know, at the end of her life, of course, she looked back over her life and people, uh, um, she had a life experience that was far different than many of others that looked like her, forget uh, others, period, uh, because she was a woman of great and wealth and amazing influence. Um, but when she looked over her life, you would imagine that she didn't know all the details. As a matter of fact, she created the, 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 the formula not to found this big beauty line. It was just to get her own hair back. And so she didn't let not knowing the details. She didn't let her parents die. She didn't let her husband die. She didn't let all of these things that could have stopped her in her tracks and, and, and caused her to say, it's no way it's going to work to stop her. But instead, she said, even though I don't know the details, I'm going to move forward. And she was rewarded very handsomely for it. I promise you, if you will move forward, if you will stop trying to figure everything out, if you will get up off your couch and get up off of trying to just sit around and wait for something to happen, but move, then I promise you there will be a new release over your life. My name is Daryl Bennett, and I want you to know I'm excited for you. I'm excited for the end of this year. I don't know if you are, but I am, because I am expecting something great, because the spirit of expectancy is the breeding ground for miracles, and when you truly expect, you move in the direction of your expectancy, and I want you to know no matter what, you can come back swinging. Share this, y'all. Thank you. Love you all.